Again, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Raymond Tapang. I'm the medical director of Merck uh, Philippines. Uh, of course, I'd like to welcome you uh, and greet you good evening. But uh, it may surprise everyone here that millions of Filipinos have thyroid disorders, including goiter and abnormal thyroid hormones like hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Yet, despite this number, awareness of this disease by Filipinos is quite low. Most Filipinos tend to ignore the symptoms of thyroid disorders, or worse, mistake them for other diseases. That is why we are glad to welcome you in this night's bloggers event entitled, Unmasking Your Thyroid. This activity is part of Merck's advocacy to raise awareness of thyroid disorders, an important but sadly often neglected disease of Filipinos. Merck is a partner of the DOH or the Department of Health and the Philippine Thyroid Association and specialty organizations such as the Philippine Society of Endocrinology and uh, Diabetes and uh, in their efforts to reach more people to know more about the disease and hopefully catch it early and seek appropriate treatment. So welcome bloggers. We hope you have an educational and that at the same time fun evening. Thank you. Thank you so much Dr. Kama. And to introduce tonight's speaker, let's welcome the Medical Science and Government Affairs Manager of Merck. Dr. Crisantus Herrera. Good evening. Um, welcome again to our event. It is my privilege to introduce our speaker for tonight. He is a clinical professor of biochemistry in the UP College of Medicine. He was my professor. He is also a professor in the section of endocrinology of the UP Philippine General Hospital, as well as a professor in the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. He is a member of various boards of specialty societies, but most notably, he is the current president of the Philippine Society of Endocrinology, Diabetes Metabolism. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to welcome Dr. Nemi Nicodemus Jr. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Nerebil ni Chris yung age ko. He was my student, but that was not so long ago, Chris. No. Sige. So magentang gabi po sa ating lahat. And I'm actually a bit nervous tonight because this is the first time I'm going to actually give a talk in front of bloggers. I always give lectures to my students in medical school. I give lectures to my colleagues to my professional colleagues as endocrinologists. I give lay lectures to patients, but I haven't really given a talk about thyroid disorders to a group of people who don't have the disease, who are just interested in knowing about what it is. So let me try to simplify the concepts that I'm going to discuss tonight into something that can be easily understood and hopefully something that will make everyone interested. So the topic, as I have heard, is about unmasking the thyroid. To begin with, where is your thyroid? So, if you just actually look at each other's neck for a bit and for a while, you will actually notice that in this part of the neck, in this central part of the neck, there is this particular structure that is often referred to by people as the Adam's apple. Lahat naman ng tao meron yan. 
ang tawag namin po dyan sa medicine is the thyroid cartilage. Nagkataon lang na sa mga lalaki, mas matulis, kaya mas prominent, mas nakakapa. But everyone, even women, have the thyroid cartilage. So kung makakapa nyo ngayon ang inyong thyroid cartilage and you actually slide down your fingers around two finger breaths below that, you will now start to feel the upper portion of this particular very butterfly-shaped organ which we refer to as the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped organ with a left lobe and a right lobe. Now you might say, left lobe, bakit ang tinuturo mo iba? Because if the person is looking at you, this is the person's left and this is the person's right. So this is the left lobe and the right lobe of the thyroid. And you can see that in the middle portion, you have there what we call as the isthmus. Okay, the isthmus is the middle part of the thyroid gland. In reality, it looks like this. So it is a pinkish structure that has a middle part, which is the isthmus. What does the thyroid gland do? In simple words, our thyroid is a gland that produces two kinds of hormones, the T3 and the T4. T3 is a short name for triiodothyronine. T4 is a short name for thyroxine. Very important for us to remember is that our thyroid gland cannot produce T4 and T3 without a very important micronutrient. And what is that micronutrient? Iodine. iodine. Correct. So, without iodine, our thyroid gland cannot produce the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. So, it is important that we have normal amounts of iodine in our diet, and this iodine can be absorbed in our gut, and then circulate in the blood, and then go to your thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. A very oftenly asked question among us doctors is, Doc, ano po bang ginagawa ng thyroid gland? Ano po ba yung T4, T3? Bakit po ba yan mahalaga? Just to summarize in general what the T4 and T3 do, they are the ones that initiate differentiation and growth. So from the time that we are inside our mother's womb, by before we even have our body parts, as early as the first few weeks when our brains are developing inside our mother's womb, the T4 and the T3 of the mother are already acting on the growing fetus so that the brain development will be normal. So, it is the one that initiates and sustains growth of the fetus. And after we are born, the T4 and the T3 that are produced by the thyroid gland of the growing child sustains the growth during childhood. Very important, you will not be intelligent human beings if your mother was lacking in thyroid hormones during the time that she was pregnant with you. Otherwise, we all have been perhaps a little have a lower IQ kung ang mga magulang natin, and particularly our mothers, had low thyroid hormones when they were pregnant with us. No? So, therefore, this highlights the very important role of the T4 and T3 in the development of the central nervous system, also known as the brain. What else? It is very important in our alertness. Without our thyroid hormones, we will not be alert. All of us will be sleepy. All of us will always feel tired because without the T4, T3, you won't have enough energy or alertness and it is also very important for the normal reproductive function women will have irregular menses if they had abnormal thyroid hormone levels you will not be able to have adequate uh, hormonal production as far as your ovaries are concerned if you do not have thyroid hormone levels that are normal what else your weight is regulated by the thyroid hormones. Your heart rate is regulated by the thyroid hormones. And your temperature is regulated by the thyroid hormones. So, ang dami. Basically, from head to foot, the T4 and T3 
are very much in control of the human body. The question is often asked, Doc, kung if iodine is very important for the production of thyroid hormones, how much iodine do we need every day? Yan, napaka-common na tanong yun eh. And to give you a very concrete answer, I will put it in the form of illustrations. This is how much iodine we need every day. For you to have adequate iodine, you have to eat two medium pieces of crab a day, or one half cup shelled kohol, or one half cup shelled hipon, or two and one fourth pieces of pusit. Okay? Any of those, kapag yan ang kinain mo sa isang araw, more or less, you will have already met your daily iodine intake. But, fortunate for us, we don't need to eat pusit every day. We don't need to eat kohol every day because we now have iodized salt. Uh, so, if you actually place iodized salt in your food, of course, the iodized salt, uh, the iodized salt to taste, then you would have already obtained somehow the recommended iodine intake for an individual. Okay? So, having said that, that you need not eat these seafoods, lalo na kung meron kang seafood allergy, you just need to take or put iodized salt. Now, what is the normal thyroid gland look uh, measurement? Ayan. Ito yung common din na tanong, gano'n po ba kalaki yung thyroid gland dapat? Of course, we're, we're talking about length and width here. So, the normal length of the thyroid gland that's here in, in front of your neck, is around 4 to 6 centimeters per lobe. So this one is 4 to 6 centimeters left and right. The thickness is around 1.3 to 1.8 centimeters. So hindi yan masyado mataba. Kaya dapat hindi mo yan masyado nakakapa ang thyroid mo kasi manipis lang yan eh. Ganyan lang yung kalaki at ganun lang siya kanipis. No? 1.3 centimeters. And it weighs around 15 to 25 grams. Napakagaan. So, kung thyroid gland yan, what is a goiter? Diba? Common yun na naririnig nyo eh. May goiter ka ba? Yan ang tinatanong ng mga tao eh. A goiter is essentially any enlargement of the thyroid gland for any reason. So, ibig sabihin, thyroid gland is a normal structure in your neck, but a goiter is not. Because a goiter means that your thyroid has already enlarged. And it should not be large. If for any reason your thyroid gland enlarges, that is what we call a goiter. And therefore, that looks like this. So if your thyroid is this size normally, a goiter is a definitely enlarged thyroid gland. And did you know that a goiter has been the subject of several paintings even in the past, in the Renaissance period? Tignan nyo itong mga very classic paintings na ito na maaari nakikita natin sa mga museum. Sabihin nyo sa akin kung meron kayo nakikita ang goiter. Meron ba? Diba? No? Nung, nung pinaint nila si Mother Mary dito. 100 Filipino adults have goiter as far as 2008 is concerned. And just to tell you, put that in perspective, in the same year, in 2008, the prevalence of diabetes in our country, 2008 to, ha? The prevalence of diabetes in our country in 2008 was only 5.1%. Meaning, mas marami pang may goiter kesa sa diabetes sa ating bansa in 2008. And yet, did we actually give a fuss about it? Did we actually consider it a very difficult medical condition? Wala. You hear people talk about diabetes left and right. But do you hear people talk about goiter? Seldom. No? And yet, you had more people with goiter in 2008 than people with diabetes. But goiter in itself, the word goiter, is not a single entity. Within the word goiter itself, we lumped several conditions. Dito nalilito ang isang tao. Dok, bakit sabi ni Dr. Goiter daw ito? Eh bakit sabi nung isa, yung isa goiter din? Ano ho ba talaga ang goiter? I said it's any enlargement of the thyroid gland, right? But goiters may be further subdivided into different forms 
depending on several parameters. One, yung form. Kung yan ba ay diffusely enlarged or nodularly enlarged. Function. Kung siya ba ay hyperfunctioning o hypofunctioning. And pathology. Ito ba ay benign or malignan. So, kapag ka pinagsama-sama natin yung three categories na yon, you have in the form of form, diffuse goiter versus nodular goiter. When you talk about function, the number of thyroid hormones, pwedeng kulang siya sa thyroid hormone, tama lang ang thyroid hormone, or sobra sa thyroid hormone, in which case we call it hyper. And pathology can either be Pwede ba itong benign, hindi cancerous, or malignan, in which case it is thyroid cancer. So if we put all of these in one table, this is what we will have. You can either have a diffuse, benign, hypothyroid patient, a diffuse, hyperthyroid, benign patient, or you can have a nodular, hypothyroid, malignan patient, or a nodular hyperthyroid benign patient. Lahat ng mga ito ang pwedeng sabihin goiter. So, hindi lang po siya iisa. Kaya pag nagpakonsulta ang isang pasyente sa doktor, hindi pwedeng sabihin lang, ah, simple goiter lang yan. Because it's never simple. You have to look at all of these considerations. And what is a nodule? Just for the purposes of illustration, this is how a nodule looks like. If this is your thyroid, this is how a nodule will look like. Hindi siya nakahiwalay sa thyroid. That particular nodule is a mass that grew within the thyroid. And this is also a goiter. What we call it a nodular goiter. Yung kanina nakita niyo lumaki ng buo, ang tawag namin doon diffuse goiter. But if it is just a nodule, it's a nodular goiter. Okay? So, how do we detect it? Just for the information of everyone, doctors usually follow three things when, we, when a patient comes to the clinic with goiter. We talk to you. We ask you certain things. We examine you, particularly examine your neck. And we order certain tests. That is the usual thing that we do. Now, what things do we ask a patient whenever the patient comes to the clinic with goiter? These are the things that we ask as part of the history. Do you have a swelling in your neck? Para bang sinasakal? Is it found on ultrasound? Or nagpa-x-ray ka, nasabi doon sa x-ray, may kaunting nakikitang pag-deviate di sa leeg mo. Local compression, para ka bang nahihirapang lumunok? Meron bang parang nakabara dyan sa bahagi ng iyong leeg? Pain. Sumasakit ba? Lalo na kapag ka iyong kinakapa o kapag lumulono ka. Signs and symptoms like, ikaw ba'y namamayat? Sobrang pagpawisan. O kaya ikaw ba'y tumataba at mabagal kumilos? Thyroid cancer, particularly in the family. Does your father or mother have thyroid cancer? So that increases your risk of developing a thyroid cancer as well. These are just some of the things that we ask a patient whenever they come to us and present with a goiter. Then we do the physical exam findings and we center our physical examination on the neck. This is the size of the normal thyroid in the outline and what you can see is that the thyroid of this patient is definitely larger than the usual thyroid gland. So ang tawag natin dyan, goiter. And because you do not see any nodule, it is diffusely enlarged, we call it a diffuse goiter. How do you differentiate a diffuse goiter from a nodular goiter? Ito na yon. This is a diffuse goiter. This is a uninodular goiter dahil isa lang ang nodule, pero pwedeng andami. In which case, we call it a multinodular goiter. So sa Pilipinas, nung ginawa namin yung prevalence survey in 2008, this is what we found. That among Filipino adults in 2008, 8.9% had goiter. And if we are to divide it between diffuse goiter and nodular goiter, we found 
that 56% of Filipinos with goiter have diffuse goiter and around 44% have nodular goiter. Okay? So, halos half-half. 56 versus 44. Konting-konti lang, no? Diffuse versus nodular. And we find this by palpating your neck. So, ito yung mga pagkakataon na ang doktor hahawakan ng leeg ng pasyente and we either do it standing in front of the patient but more appropriately at mas magandang makakapayong leeg if we stand behind the patient. Dahil yung aming mga daliri ang aming ginagamit para kapain yung thyroid ng pasyente. So normally, we stand up we, we go to your back or your, we, we go behind you and then we put our fingers here at the portion where your thyroid gland is supposed to be and we now move our fingers to feel your thyroid. If it is large, if it has nodules, and if we feel any pain at all when we feel your thyroid. So, isang babae, maaring ganito. May malaki siyang thyroid. Kitang-kita, kahit hindi na namin kapain yan eh. Tinitignan pa lang namin ng leeg ng pasyente, kitang-kita na rito, malaki ang kanyang thyroid, may goiter siya. Pwede rin na kahit hindi ka pa in, nagpakita pa lang, pumasok pa lang sa klinik ng doktor, halatang halata. Meron na siya kagad malaking thyroid nodule dito sa kanyang leeg. So, we don't need to feel the neck sometimes. Minsan, pagpasok mo pa lang, Parang nagsisisigaw na yung iyong leeg. Ito, nandito na po ang sakit ko. Okay? Sumisigaw na siya sa doktor without us even feeling the neck of that particular patient. So after we do the history and ask you about the symptoms, after we feel your neck, that's the time we order for tests. At dito ngayon, nagkakatalo. Ano ba ang resulta mo para sabihin ikaw ay merong hyper o hypo. Ayan. Isa pa itong importanteng tinatanong ng mga pasyente. So the test that we do will include blood tests like TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. We might also request for an ultrasound to find out kung yung nakakapa namin ay talagang nga bang naroon. O baka mamaya ang nakakapa ko lang isa, pero yung pala magkadikit yun, dalawa pala sa ultrasound. And if needed, we ask for a biopsy, the fine needle aspiration biopsy, especially if we are entertaining possible malignancy or cancer. Just to review, a simple concept, ano ba ang TSH at bakit in-order to ni Doc? Ang TSH is the hormone that is produced in the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is inside our brain it is actually behind our eyes, as you can see here in the illustration, and it secretes that important hormone, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. What does it do? It stimulates your thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. So kapag ikaw ay sufficient ang iodine sa pagkain, pagka sinabi ni TSH galing sa utak na, oy thyroid, gumawa ka na ng T4, T3, your thyroid will now produce enough T4 and T3 to give you enough supply. So, the TSH is the main driver for the formation of T4 and T3. And you can diagnose a patient as having abnormality depending on the level of the TSH. If the TSH of the patient is low, anong ibig sabihin nun? Si TSH low. So, ibig sabihin, sabi ng thyroid, marami na akong ginagawang T4, T3. Matulog ka muna dyan, TSH. Babagsak si TSH dahil sa sobrang dami ng T4, T3. And we call it hyperthyroidism. Kapag naman kulang ang ginagawang T4, T3 ng thyroid, sasabihin ng, thy ng pituitary, oy Ano bang nangyayari sa'yo? Bakit hindi ka gumagawa? So, ipobombard niya ngayon si thyroid ng napakaraming TSH. Kaya pag mataas ang TSH, ang tawag namin doon, hypothyroidism. Looking at it from another perspective, looking at the thyroid hormones itself, 
If your thyroid gland is overproducing thyroid hormones, we call it hyperthyroidism. If it is underproducing thyroid hormones, we call it we call it hypothyroidism. Okay? Simple lang, na? And therefore, just to give you a, an overview of what doctors look at when you give them the results of your TSH T4 T3, when we see that T4 and T3 are both elevated, meaning sobra ang dami ng ginagawang thyroid hormone at kulang si TSH, ang tawag namin doon hyperthyroidism. Kapag naman kulang ang ginagawang This now becomes the most interesting part of our discussion. What will happen to you when you have excess thyroid hormone or hyperthyroidism? And I will summarize it in the form of an illustration. Ito ang nangyayari sa isang babae kapag siya ay may hyperthyroidism. Mabilis nerviosin, nagiging irritable, hirap makatulog, Lumuluwa ang mata, lumalaki ang kanyang thyroid na kakagoiter, nagiging irregular ang regla, nagkakaroon ng madalas na pagdumi, pagkakain lang mamaya CR na siya. Every time kakain siya mamaya pupunta na sa CR. Hindi diarrhea ha, malambot lang ang dumi at maya maya lang pagkakain may lalabas. So madalas nasa CR. Ang mga kamay, pawisin. Kausap mo pa lang, parang relax naman kayong dalawa. Pag hinawa ka mo yung kamay niya, pawis na pawis ang kamay. And if they get pregnant early in the first trimester, they tend to have excessive vomiting. Yung ating normal na paglilihi, mas lumalala in a hyperthyroid patient because they have more vomiting. What else? They can have difficulty swallowing because of the goiter. Hirap lumuno. Nagpapalpitate ito. Bakit ganito? Wala naman noong nakakanervyo sa akin. Parang ninenervyo sa ako palagi. Parang kinakabugo yung dibdib ko. Ang bilis ng dibok ng puso. Weight loss. Do, pumapayat ako kahit hindi ako nagpapapayat. Kahit wala akong ginagawa, bigla akong pumapayat. Sa unsa simula, natutuwa yung babae. Kasi pumapayat siya. Pero tuloy-tuloy siyang namamaya kahit wala siyang ginagawa. So natatakot na siya kasi may kasama ng kaba, kasama ng nanginginig yung mga kamay. At eto, sobrang pagpawisan. Kahit na naka-aircon na yung kwarto, hindi siya nilalamig. Lahat tayo nangangatog na, siya pinagpapawisan pa din. So ang tendency, namamaypay pa siya kahit inside an air-conditioned room. And among Asians, what they found out was, People with hyperthyroidism tend to develop a form of paralysis that is intermittent. Bigla na lang manghihina, hindi makakatayo. Kailangan may magbubuhat at bumabagsak ang potassium dahil sa hyperthyroidism. It is peculiar among Asians. It is what we call as thyrotoxic paralysis. Ang problema doon, because of the paralysis, they become immobilized for a time until they are brought to the hospital, bibigyan ng potassium, at kailangan gamutin yung kanilang hyperthyroidism. At saka lang sila pwedeng makatayo. So medyo nakakatakot din yun. And of course, a family history of thyroid disease or diabetes. These are the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. So, meron ba kayo na-imagine na ganito mga kasama nyo? Namamayat ng kusa, pawis na pawis, irritable, hindi mapagkatulog, nanginginig ang mga kamay, sila ay lumuluwa ang mata. Ang pagluwa ng mata, hindi lang parehong mata. Minsan, isang mata lang luluwa. Okay, so, it's not always both eyes having proptosis. It can be a single eye. And so, medyo mas kakaiba yung itsura mo when you actually have that. These are the manifestations of a patient with untreated hyperthyroidism. So, ang tanong to, paano ganagamot dyan? Kung meron kang ganyang sakit, simple. We just give them medications that will block the formation of the T4, T3. Ganun lang yung kasimple. Kaya lang, ang gamutan, hindi ganun kadali. You just do not give them for one week like antibiotics. 
the treatment may last for months to even years. So it is important that patients with hyperthyroidism, once they are treated, are following up with the doctor on a regular basis. Because we ask them to check their P4 para malaman kung yung sobrang taas, unti-unti nang bumababa at nagnanormal. Kasi yung ibang mga pasyente, ang mahirap, oras na nawala na yung palpitation, oras na nawala na yung sobrang pagpapawis after one month, okay na ako. Magaling na ako, hindi na ako babalik kay doktor. Okay? Unfortunately, that happens. And when they stop their medication, babalik lahat ng symptoms. And in the severe cases, kapag ka sumoblang lala ang symptoms, they go into a condition known as thyroid storm. The thyroid storm is a severe form of hyperthyroidism na yung temperature sobrang tumataas, yung tibok ng puso sobrang bumibilis to the point na nahihirapan na siyang huminga. And they are brought to the emergency room because of the difficulty of breathing. So it's important that it gets recognized and treated. Ito, paano naman yung kabaligtaran? Hypothyroidism. Ito ang pinakamadaling uh, scapegoat ng mga babaeng tumataba. Kasi, ang hypothyroidism is characterized by weight gain. Kapag ka ikaw ay tumataba ng dahan-dahan nang hindi ka naman daw malakas kumain at ikaw naman ay walang ibang ginagawa, then you might be hypothyroid. So marami ba kilala mga babae, uy, medyo tumaba ka ngayon? Hindi, hypothyroid lang ako. Okay? So, they lack the hormones. But, of the different symptoms, eto pa, tiredness, mabilis, mapagod, makakalimutin, medyo depressed, malungkutin, hindi makakonsentrate sa trabaho, may nakikilala ba kayong mga ganyan? Parang na dead depressed, mabagal na mag-isip, mabilis mapagod, no? Actually, common yan eh. Kahit wala ka namang hypothyroidism, pwede ka meron yan eh, di ba? But, what makes it hypothyroid are the other manifestations like thinning of the hair. Do, bakit mo na nalagas yung buhok ko? Kahit na okay naman po yung shampoo ko, dati ko naman ginagamit yung shampoo na yun, eh. pero ngayon po, mas maraming nalalagas. Loss of body hair. Kung dati, nagtatanggal pa sila ng buhok sa kilikiling, ngayon wala na sila matanggal. Okay? Parang mapilis na nawawala yung buhok. You can also have dry, patchy skin. So yung iyong soft, smooth skin, napapalitan ng tuyot na balat. At maligasgas na yung balat mo. Mabilis tumatanda, in other words, ang itsura ng isang hypothyroid patient. You can have cold intolerance, ang bilis mong ginawin. Kahit hindi naman maginaw na maginaw yung kwarto, ikaw na kailang jacket ka na. Okay? You can also have abnormal cholesterol as a result of that. And puffy eyes. Ito yung mga pasyente pag nakita mo, Uy, umiyak ka ba? Kasi namubugto ang mata mo eh. Yun pala hypothyroid na siya. Hindi siya umiiyak at namamagalang yung paligid ng mata niya dahil kulang na siya sa thyroid hormone. Yung boses, dati siyang soprano, ngayon alto na lang siya. Okay? Hindi na niya kaya masyadong mataas yung boses niya because of the deepening of the voice. Okay? That is a characteristic of patients with prolonged hypothyroidism. You can have difficulty of swallowing and slow heart rate. Mabagal ang pagtibok ng puso. Nagiging irregular din yung regla parang din sa hyperthyroidism at most of the time, sila yung mahirap magkaanak. In fact, kapag may isang mag-asawa na nagpapawarkup sa aming mga endocrinologist for infertility, one of the things that we assess in a woman is the thyroid gland. Baka hypothyroid ka, kaya ka nahihirapang magbuntis. So we check the T4, T3, and the TSH. And, hirap dumumi. Kung kanina sa hyper, maya-maya, nasa CR, para dumumi dito sa hyper, of the voice. If you have these characteristics, mas malaki ang chance na ikaw ay hypothyroid. So what will the doctor do? He will order for a TSH, T4, T3, and here, the T4 and T3 may be low, and the TSH is high. Paano ginagamot? Ito, mas simple. 
kasi dito, iisang gamot lang ang binibigay namin. Doon sa hyperthyroidism, bukod kasi sa tableta, pwede pa namin ipa-opera yung kanilang thyroid eh, para matanggal, para hindi na hyperactive. Or painumin yung tinatawag na radioactive iodine para man patunaw na yung hyper na thyroid. Dito sa hypothyroid, simple lang ang gamot. Kung ano'y nawawala, bigyan mo siya. Ang nawawala sa kanya, thyroid hormone. Bigyan mo siya ng thyroid hormone. And we now have synthetic thyroid hormones in the form of tablets. We just give that tablet once a day. We adjust it so that the thyroid hormones go back to normal levels. But the problem is, once you are hypothyroid and you start thyroid hormone treatment, that is for life. Because your thyroid hormone will not be produced anymore because your thyroid gland is already either malfunctioning, tamad na siya, or wala na siya. Kasi tinanggal na. Either inoperahan ka, or napainom ka na radioactive iodine, wala ka ng thyroid. Hindi na nag-regenerate ang thyroid natin. Kaya, lifetime ka na papainomin ng thyroid hormone tablets. So with this very short introduction, I hope I gave you a more clear view on what goiter is, what is hyperthyroid, what is hypothyroid, ano ba ang diffuse goiter, at ano ba ang nodular goiter. So in reality, when a, when a patient comes to the clinic of a doctor, Doc, may goiter po ba ako? Marami, ta marami kaming gagawin. We ask you something, we examine your neck, we request for certain tests. And that's the only time we can tell you what type of goiter you have. Whether it is a toxic goiter or hyper, a hypothyroid, whether you have diffuse goiter or nodular goiter. And of course, nakita nyo na yung mga symptoms no? ng hyper and hypo na tinitignan namin sa isang pasyente. With that, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nemanjo Nicodemus Jr. for a very enlightening presentation. I'm sure we have a lot of questions, but before we begin, uh, we just like to plug that we have a website, uh, www.thyroid.ph. Uh, we've developed it with Sir Nemi as well as other doctors from the Philippine Thyroid Association as well as, as, well as from the Philippine Society of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism. So you can share it, you can look at it, and we even have a self-quiz there. It's tested. It will see if there's any changes made to that virtual environment. Did it run a script? Did it do something to that virtual computer? ever. Meron po bang Filipino term ng thyroid gland? In reality, kasi wala. Wala. Unfortunately, wala tayong salitang Pilipino na nangangulugan kapareho-kapareho ng thyroid gland in English. I tried googling it. Ang lumabas na salita, thyroid deo, but I don't think it is. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't use any uh, Filipino term for thyroid gland. Also, be why you have awareness because I think so. Because you don't have any Filipino. Okay. Right. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, just please use the microphone. Uh, I'm one of those six, doc, out of one thousand. Wow. Yeah, I have nodular, I greater, no. But the, my my doctor, doctor, dito na is saying it's just nodules. Okay. Uh, been diagnosed since 2001, and given um, eltroxin since then and changes it from time to time. But every day I have it. Um, recently, actually, hindi na po recent. Last March, I have quarterly checkup, um, ultrasound, and TSH, and everything, yes. workups. Um, last March, uh, Dr. Dito na told me to have, to have it biopsy. I'm, I'm quite worried about that. I, I, underst I understood, pero parang I don't like to go into it. I also asked this kanina kay Dr. Po, if I can have it done by an ENT. But the doctor said, my doctor said no. Have it done in Makati Med at this particular doctor. So hindi pa rin ako nagpapakuha. Should I be worried? Because before po kasi okay lang eh. All the ultrasound is okay, but last last March he told me there's 
classifications, which is not there before. I would like to understand that. Please. Yes. It's a very practical question, particularly since you yourself are afflicted with it. So I showed you the picture a while ago of multinodular goiter. So if you have several nodules, we call it a multinodular goiter. And it appears that based on your uh, story that your doctor has been entertaining it as a benign, benign lesion lang. So although meron kang nodule, tingin niya benign. Not until uh, earlier this year, you had another ultrasound which showed merong calcification. Ano ba yung calcification? In layman's term, calcification may parting matigas. And kapag may matigas kasi, depending on where that calcification lies, whether outside or inside, we in, we entertain either it is malignant or not. If the calcification is inside, there is a probability that it is malignant. So I think that's the reason why Dr. Nitonwa wanted you to have a biopsy because a biopsy will be able to get some samples para makita under the microscope and in that way, mas magiging confident in saying whether it is really benign or malignant. So uh, biopsies are performed by several doctors. Sometimes endocrinologists do it. Sometimes ENTs do it. Sometimes we refer to pathologists. Uh, ang kagandahan lang minsan sa pathologists kapag ka sila na ang gumagawa, sila rin kasi yung nagbabasa. So sila rin yung may microscope, sila rin yung nag, nag stain So kung baga parang it saves the process, mas mabilis lumalabas yung result kapag pathologist na yung gumagawa. Unlike me, if I do it on you in my clinic, isasubmit ko pa yon sa pathologist na babasahin pa, tapos babalik pa sa akin yung result. So sometimes um, other doctors do it like the pathologist. So in your case, I'm not sure exactly how it was worded in your thyroid ultrasound result, but maaring may nakita si doktor na suspicious word, wordings doon. Kaya nag, uh, para to be sure, he requested you to have uh, an biopsy. I, I would suspect that I have some hyperthyroidism, but uh, once neglected, what would be the implications of this? You know, it would like escalate to some other diseases. Right. I, that's a very important question. What will happen if I do not treat someone who has hyperthyroidism? Number one, yung sinasabi natin kanina pagluwa ng mata, maaaring mangyari yun. You can have proptosis of your eye. Number two, a very important and a very dangerous consequence, you will have irregular heartbeat. So yung heartbeat mo na dapat normal lang ang, ang uh, pagbeat, magiging irregular yan. And if you have irregularities in your heartbeat, pwede kang mamanas. You can have edema, and then eventually your heart will fail. You will develop heart failure as a result of untreated hyperthyroidism. And uh, also, it may have negative impact on your bones. Mas mabilis ka magka-osteoporosis kapag ikaw ay may hyperthyroidism, which is untreated. And as I mentioned a while ago, a very important emergency case yung thyroid storm. Pwede ka nalang tumaas ang lagnat, sobra, sobrang bilis ang tibok ng puso, hirap ka nang huminga, namamanas ka pa, hindi ka na makahiga ng derecho. And when, and when you, they bring you to the emergency room with heart failure, there are some patients who actually do not make it. Another question. Um, aside from those you mentioned, the causes of this disease, uh, what are the other ones? Like stress? Oh, oh yeah, that's a very important question as well. What can trigger a person to have hyperthyroidism? The most important, family history. Kung ang nanay mo, lola mo, tita mo, may hyperthyroidism, malaki ang chance ikaw magkakaroon din. But they found out based on studies that iodine intake is also associated with hyperthyroidism. Kapag nasobrahan ka ng iodine sa pagkain, pwede ka rin mag-hyperthyroidism. And in studies, they have shown that adverse life events can trigger hyperthyroidism. Naghiwala yung mag-asawa, nag-break ang mag-boyfriend, pwede magkaroon ng hyperthyroidism. Stressful life events can also trigger the development of hyperthyroidism.
Maybe uh, clicking off from that question, meron bang mga, for example, if you're hyperthyroid or hypothyroid, meron bang mga bawal na pagkain? Kanina, di ba, pinakita ko sa inyo, ano yung dapat kainin para normal iodine, handle, di ba? So kung ikaw ngayon ay hyperthyroidist, hyperthyroid, ano ang thyroid hormone mo? Sobra o kulang? Hyperthyroid ka. Sobra o kulang? Sobra. Sobra. So kung sobra ang iyong thyroid hormones, kailangan mo pa ba ng maraming iodine o hindi na? Hindi na. So ano dapat ang mga pagkain na iiwasan mo kapag ikaw ay hyperthyroid? Maalat. Yung mga pinakita natin kanina, di ba? Na puro rich in iodine. Seafoods, seaweeds. Yung mga yan ang iiwasan. Kasi yan yung mas mataas sa iodine. So pag hyper, iwas doon. Pero, kabaligtaran. Sige, ito kasi mas common, Chris, yung kabaligtaran na tanong eh. Dok, bawal po ba akong kumain ng repolyo, gabi, pechay, talong, cauliflower, carrots? Yung mga gulay na ito, ang tawag natin dito ay goitrogens. Ibig sabihin, kapag sumoga ka ng kain ng mga gulay na to, pwede kang magkagoiter. Pero, mangyayari lang yon kapag ikaw ay kumain ng isang balde. So, hindi naman talaga yung normal na dami ng kain. And it will only lead to a greater if you are hypothyroid to begin with. Kapag kulang ka na sa thyroid hormone at kumain ka pa ng ganito, mas lalo kang magkakagoiter. In other words, kapag hyper ka, sa palagay nyo makakatulong yan? Para pababain yung iyong iodine sa katawan? Yes! So kapag ikaw ay hyperthyroid, sobra-sobra ka na sa iodine, mas dapat nga kumakain ka ng mga repolyo, gabi, bechay, talong, cauliflower, carrots. Kasi yun na magpapababa ng unti-unti ng iodine. Okay? So, uh, common misconception yan. If you have no juice, it's the worst kind because it's the one that turns into cancer. Okay. You're talking about the nodule and not the hyper and the hypo. Yes, Dalawa yun, eh, no? Okay. So, yung hyper, hypo, kung kulang ka or sobra ka sa hormone. You, ikaw hindi. You thyroid ka. So, that's good. Next issue, may nodule ka versus wala kang nodule. You have a nodule. The thing that we always say to patients is, a nodule that is not a cancer to begin with will never become a cancer. Okay, that's something that's true. A nodule that is not a cancer to begin with will never convert into a cancer. The problem is, there are certain nodules who present initially with very, very small points na cancerous and therefore, hindi na detect agad. So initially, akala ng doktor, benign. Pero pala, sobrang liit pala pala yung...